Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to the XA Native YouTube channel 363. Listen, man, my name is Kizia Latran. The girl Mitty Harden, it is Scientific Wednesday right here in the studio. We are talking about everything in space and beyond, so you do not want to miss that. And with that, we have a panel of guests as well with Walter Salima and Philip Engelbrecht to chat to us about everything in the universe and beyond. And as well, I, I had the opportunity, opportunity rather, to go out in Hermanus and attend the 24-hour launch of the Space Weather Center, which was absolutely phenomenal. You do not want to miss that. And lastly, we are catching up with Polly T, a sensational rapper who is changing the game as we speak right now. So you can hear we have in, an entertainment yet educational show for you guys. You do not want to miss out. But now, let's check out who's rocking with Sibu and Loa in the lounge. Yes, 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 yes. are in the building. He's doing what we do best, making sure that you guys are entertained all the way till 6 o'clock. Yes. You've done your best by tuning into the biggest, the baddest, the most hip and happening each show in the motherland. Today we talk all things astronomy. Astronomy yes. is a study of everything in the universe beyond the Earth's atmosphere. This includes objects that we can see with our naked eye, yes. like the sun, the moon, the stars. And it also includes things that we cannot see with our naked eye, but we can use a telescope to see, like the galaxies and particles. Today we are joined with Walter Salima, an astrophysicist and space science research student at UWC. We are also joined by Philip Engelbrecht, a science communicator at the Cape Town Science Centre. Welcome gentlemen and welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for Thank coming. You. Thank you. Okay, it's so a pleasure uh, to be here. Let's dive straight into it for you, uh, Philip. Mm. Firstly, for people that don't really know what astronomy is, can you please differentiate between astronomy and astrology? Mm. Of course. So astronomy is basically the study of celestial objects. Mm. Yeah. So all the objects that's outside of Earth's atmosphere. Now a celestial object can be in the form of a planet, mm. a star, a comet, even a galaxy. Mm. Okay. Right? And it, you study the motions of these objects through space, their position in the night sky. And you also discover, you, d you study their properties. Mm. So is, is this a bright blue star? Is this a comet made out of ice and rock? Is mm. this a a gas giant or a rocky planet, those types of properties. Mm. Now, astrology is an attempt to almost study, it's an attempt to see that those positions in the night sky mm -hmm. have an effect on your personality oh. and events in your life. Okay. Now, the major difference actually between the two, it's very easy. Yeah. Yeah. The one's the science, which is astronomy, yeah. and that astronomy and astronomers, they base their facts and everything that they say, it's based off scientific research mm. and observations, mm. whereas astrology is more of a pseudoscience or oh. a false science, okay. as we say. And it can be seen as more as a belief system rather yeah. than a real science. So those are the two major differences between astronomy and astrology. Yeah. Oh, okay. That, that <laughs> simplifies it for me. <laughs> now, I want to find out when it comes to astronomy, most people are thinking, oh, well, astronomy it has to do with these people who are like astro uh, astrophysicists. But what I want to find out is that how can it improve life on Earth for the regular person like <coughs> me and Sibu next to me? Uh, okay. Um, that's a big and interesting question. Yeah. And um, this is how I'll go around it. So there was an event that once happened in 1859 mm -hmm. where the mass injected uh, something called coronal mass and then those uh, magnetized mass of, uh, of, of, of from the sun and then impacted the earth in a way that it uh, disrupted the electric I mean the electricity it caused the electric fire mm -hmm. and then um, also disturbed the I think it was telephone gram by then. Mm -hmm. So we, we are now investing in, in the space science where we have like a lot of space telescope and a lot of telescopes that are based on 
taking the emissions from the sun. Yeah. And then that is to ensure that we give people one enough warning so that they can, uh, they can be aware of what's coming. Yeah. Right. So um, astronomy also, we are also like interested in finding out more about space. Okay. Yeah. And in doing so, we are also developing instruments. So mm. there are a lot of people involved in mechanics, involved mm. in, in, in developing mirrors. Mm. For example, so we have high energy, high energy and neural mirrors that are developed for space telescopes. Mm -hmm. So some people claim that um, with a little bit of adjustment, those uh, mirrors can be used to, to do something like um, brain, uh, brain cancer, they can use to treat things oh, like brain hey, cancer. Hey. So, <coughs> mm. we, in, and another for argument's sake, I will say that um, the way, way we are with uh, phones and smartphones yeah. and then astronomy had part to do with that. Yeah. And yeah. I wouldn't have thought that though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's so many things that you said that were very interesting. Mm. And you do get to mention, because Rwandile did say that there's, um, with astronomy, there's a um, telescope that didn't look at other things that are outside of Earth, like mm. comics and other stuff. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask, when it comes to planets, how important or why is it important for us to actually get to um, study other planets and know more about them? Mm. So understanding planets firstly, so looking at planets, looking at their physical properties, so what are these planets made up of? Yes. Is this a gas giant or a terrestrial planet, also called a rocky planet? It helps us understand their formation, mm. Mm. right? And it, understanding the physical properties of, of planets, we can understand how, why, basically understand why they look the way they look today. Yes. Mm. So why is Mars, for instance, a, basically a desert? Why? Is Venus a hull on Earth, mm. so, you know? And studying the pl planets and studying their physical properties helps us understand what happened in that planet's life history mm. in order to lead to what it looks like today. Mm. But also studying the dynamics of planets and how they interact with each other can also give us an understanding on how life formed on Earth. Mm. Yes. Not only on, or, uh, on Earth, how life may form on other planets in mm. the other parts of our galaxy and in other galaxies as well. Mm. So that's why it's very important to study our planets. Mm. And speaking, I mean, you spoke about uh, uh, physical uh, features of a planet, etc. What is the physical, uh, what is the Earth made out of? Um, so the Earth is made out of um, materials that are remaining after, that remained after the sun has formed. What do you mean by that? Uh, so, so I can start by introducing you to how the solar system is formed, or how the, the stars are, mm -hmm. are, are formed. So, when the star is formed, it is formed out of a huge gas that is mainly made of hydrogen atom. And then this huge case, it uh, collapsed under its own gravity. I am so sorry. Before you continue, we'll continue this after the ad break. Right okay, now, okay, we okay. have to see what Kezia is doing uh, right over there in the music, or rather the dining room. Let's yeah. see what she's up to. Well, I certainly didn't know that stars are made out of hydrogen atoms. And I'm pretty sure Walter has so, so much more to say. But today, as you have heard, we are talking about everything in space and beyond. If you could choose which... Um, Earth, well, rather, planet to visit. Would it be Earth or would it be something else? Let us know on our social media pages. You do not want to miss out the rest of the conversation as we come back after the ad break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I decided to kick Sibu away because I'm like, no, I need a bit of a, a girl with me here. I need girl some power. Girl power, you helping know, each other. And we have a, a lovely, and it's a dynamic duo yes. going on here. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> it yes. is Philip as well as a while. So I'm still in the studio discussing all things that have to do with astronomy. If you are like me and you're saying, I have a lot, these are big words. Talk to me. Listen, Uwata and Philip. I mean, Philip and Uwata are here to make sure that all those questions get answered. So hold on to our uh, Instagram pages, Facebook, and let us know what questions you might have. Before the ad break went away, you were giving me an answer. Okay. Yes, um, but you can you can make it short or make it however it is that you want to answer it. Um, okay, I'll just make it short. Yeah. But of the gas cloud that the star will be forming from, mm -hmm. um, some material will remain in the disk, and this uh, material will then um, combine and then form planets. 
Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's how the earth is formed. That's how the planets are formed. Wow. wow. I thought it's quite interesting. It's so funny because I literally just thought God said, let there be earth. And then the <laughs> earth, <laughs> the <laughs> earth and Kemala, child. So I'm learning something different. I'm learning a different perspective. That's absolutely amazing. Mm. And I have to ask you, you know, they are black holes, mm -hmm. right? What are black holes and what are the different types of black holes that exist? Mm. Okay. So... Black holes are formed when you get massive blue stars mm -hmm. that collapse under the weight of their own gravity. Mm. Right? So gravity squishes them down into a point that is so dense, right? it has a very, very strong gravitational mm. force. Right. Now, we re the reason why we say it's a black hole is because the gravitational attraction mm. is so, so powerful yeah. that even light cannot escape. Oh. In order to escape the gravitational pull of a gra black hole, mm -hmm. you need to be traveling faster than the speed of light. Right. And nothing can do that in the universe, unfortunately. Yeah. So therefore, nothing can escape a black hole. Right. Now, mm. the two types, there's, many, there's, I think, four types of black holes, mm -hmm. but I'm going to be covering the two most common types. Mm -hmm. The first one is called a stellar mass black hole. Mm -hmm. Now, those are formed when you have these big blue stars, like I've said. An example of one of those blue stars can be Rigel, mm -hmm. and we find Rigel in the constellation of Orion. Mm -hmm. It's about 80 to about 89 times uh, more bigger than our sun, mm -hmm. right? Wow. And when that star collapses in under its own mass, it will form a stellar um, mass black hole. Mm -hmm. Now, stellar mass black holes have a mass between 5 to 10 solar mass, which right. means it's 5 to 10 times heavier than our sun. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Now... The, the second most common type mm. is supermassive black holes. Right. Now, supermassive black holes are extremely big. Yeah. It's between 500,000 oh, to a big. few billion times heavier than our sun. Mm. The best example of a supermassive black hole is one that's found in our very own galaxy. Yeah. We call it Sagittarius A star. Yes. And it's over six mil, uh, it's four million times heavier than our own sun. Mm. Right? And it's right in the center of our Milky Way galaxy. Mm. And that's nothing compared to some of the other black holes that we've discovered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the biggest one, or the, one of the biggest ones that we have discovered was called M87 star. Mm. And it has a mass that is six and a half billion times heavier than our own sun. Oh my word. So those are the two most common types of black holes that we find in our universe. Mm. And I love that you say that and you keep, uh, like we keep discovering new things mm. about what's actually out there. And the people like you are there to make mm. us make sure that we know different things. Now, what I want to find out, you mentioned the Milky Way in there, and I want to actually find out, this one is for you, what is the Milky Way? So the Milky Way, as we mentioned, is the galaxy in which our solar, our solar system is located. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's just made of billions of stars, planets, and gas that are bound together by gravity. Mm -hmm. And... Um, just to give a little bit of story of how we evolved to understand that we have a Milky Way is one of the galaxies. Mm. So back in the days, they used to believe that um, stars are only found in our own galaxy. Mm. And um, there was a great debate between the two great phys physicists or astronomers, which is Shapley and Haley, if I'm not mistaken. And then one was arguing that the Milky Way, it is one of the million galaxies that are available in the universe. Mm. And one was arguing that it is the only galaxy that is existing. Yeah. However, they were astro astonished, astonished by the <laughs> observations that came up of Edwin Hubble. Mm. And that showed that, indeed, um, the Milky Way is just one of the million galaxies that exist in our own universe. One of the million. Yes. <laughs> there are million galaxies that yeah, exist. There are millions of galaxies of that million. exist. You know, when I attended the Space Weather Center, it said, well, they said that we know 3% of actually what's happening beyond Earth, Earth and space. Oh, well, 3%. Yeah. So can you imagine? <laughs> you know, I remember creating a solar system when I was back in primary school. And I want to ask you, Philip, galaxies why would you say they are so vast in differences in their shape in their size in the activities that they bring forth so are you asking why they uh, the, the galaxies are in different shapes and mm -hmm. sizes well there are many things that can influence the gravity mm -hmm. uh, the, the the shape and the size of galaxies yeah. right it can be the uh, due to the number of stars that are found within those galaxies mm -hmm. But what also influences the shape is sometimes over many millions of years, these galaxies bump into each other. Mm. 
right? So when they bump into each other, their gravitational pulls will have an mm. influence on their shapes, and that will make all these weird shapes of the galaxies. So it really boils down to mostly the, the number of stars that are found within the galaxies, and also if they bump into each other or not. Like that. Mm. Okay, so that creates the shapes, mm. whether they bump into each other or not. Yeah, if they collide with each other. Got you guys, thank um, you so much for joining us. Just, okay. Two seconds, yeah. okay, I'm two about seconds. to move on, yes. Yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, just to add on that, um, our galaxy Milky Way and Andromeda, they might bump mm. into each other in mm. the near future. Yeah. They might. So, um, what would happen to us on Earth? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, that we won't be, die. We won't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At least we're safe. We're safe, guys. We're not going to die. <laughs>